So you're ready to dive into Dolby Atmos in Logic Pro. I am going to tell you today on exactly how to get started and what settings are needed to create your project inside of Logic Pro. Hi, my name is Tyson. I'm a mastering engineer here at Dinosaur Dog Mastering. And today I wanted to show you exactly how to set up a Dolby Atmos mix inside of Logic Pro. Before I dive into that though, every single Dolby mix starts with a great stereo mix. And so with that in mind, I want to share with you my ultimate mixing checklist. You can get that for free by downloading that in the description. The first link in the description will bring you to a page where you can download the ultimate mixing checklist if you want better and faster mixes. Okay, with that said, let's dive into the content of how to get started with Dolby Atmos inside of Logic Pro. Oh. To start your, your mixing Atmos project, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a new actual Logic Pro session that is in Dolby Atmos. So you want to go up to File and then New Project. You can create a project. You want to go to Project Settings and go to Audio. The key thing you want to change here is the Spatial Audio. You want to change that to Dolby Atmos. It will warn you saying, oh no, we changed to Dolby Atmos and that's fine. Uh, the sample rate that you can select with a Dolby Atmos project is either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz. I'm going to keep this at 48 because it's cheaper and easier to do. <laughs> and then pan law, generally, you want to turn this off to zero just based on best practices. So that way, when you pan something elsewhere other than the front, it doesn't actually sound quieter when translated all to the different formats that Dolby Atmos may apply to. And then now you're started in your Dolby Atmos project. The one other thing that you're gonna to wanna to change right away is open up your mixer panel and there's gonna be the Atmos, the Dolby Atmos plugin on your master bus. When you open this up, you're going to find your little box. You've probably seen this before if you've uh, mixed, watched any tutorials on Dolby Atmos, you've seen this box of all the objects inside of your mix, and you can change uh, all of your binaural rendering settings here. The most important thing is to make sure you're monitoring in the correct format. So if you don't have an actual Dolby setup, and you don't have 11 speakers or 12 speakers uh, that you're monitoring from, you want to be able to change this to whatever you actually do have. So if you have 2.0, um, or binaural. So I'm wearing headphones right now, so I'm gonna change this to binaural, which will allow me to monitor on headphones for my Dolby Mix. So the other thing you're gonna to wanna to be aware of when you're monitoring, especially in binaural, is these the surrounding bed objects. So this is essentially the mix outside of objects. So if you're just panning something, so for example, in this track, I just have a panning thing. So if I pan it all the way to the back, right, this is on the actual what they refer to as the surround bed. And that is right here. So these are all of your different channels and different speakers that would exist in a traditional Dolby setup. And so your binaural rendering will allow you to select how far away these speakers are from you. And what this will do is just essentially add more reverb to make something sound closer or further away. The way that Dolby Atmos really works in essence is creating unique host delays in headphones in order to recreate a physical space. So that, that is why the values are important because if I select near or off, that's going to impact the amount of reverb that's being produced by the objects floating around in my mix. My recommendation is just to leave these at the default mid. It's going to sound the most natural to you, most likely. And after you get used to it, it'll be a good way to create your mixes because when you're adding additional objects, so for example, if I add another track here and instead of using the surround bed, I make this an object, which I can explain more about objects in another video. If I make this an object, if I go back to my mixer and I can now see I have audio two as an object, which is sitting in the front of the mix because that's where it's panned. And you can also change the binaural render on this item as well. I can turn it off, 
far, et cetera. With all of that said, this is how you get started in Adobe Atmos project. I am now ready to import all of my tracks and start mixing my project. And when I'm gonna import my tracks, they're all gonna be mono or stereo tracks, and that's completely fine. We can then utilize those tracks and pan them wherever we want to inside of either the object, the surround panner, or the object panner, depending on what we wanna do with our tracks. Okay, with that said, I hope this was helpful in getting you started in mixing in Dolby Atmos in Logic Pro and setting up your session. If you found this at all helpful, don't, don't forget to subscribe as I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help you get more professional mixes. All right, I'll see you in the next one.